early morning at Kansas State University. The sun's just starting to rise and I'm standing in front of the chemistry building looking across the street at one of the original chemistry buildings, Willard Hall. As we walk up the street, we can see the uh, construction still ongoing on Hale Library to the left of your screen. Kansas State is one of the first universities that came about under the Morrell Act. Um, this is the Central Administration Building, Anderson Hall, one of the first buildings on Kansas State's campus. And all the buildings here, or almost all of them, are built of native Kansas limestone. We've moved past Anderson Hall and we're walking toward the Student Union uh, to see a display of the former scientific glassblower uh, Mr. Mitsugi Ono's work. I think you'll enjoy that. I can hear construction going on in the distance. Seems like there's always something going on here. Um, this is the student plaza in front of the uh, student union. If there's someone that's got something to say, this is where you'll hear them say it. Um, we'll go into the union and go up one flight of stairs to see Mr. Ono's work on the third floor of the union. Ono was a scientific glassblower at Kansas State University um, before I came. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the things that he spent his spare time on. Um, one thing that he was famous for was his version of the Klein bottle, which you will all recognize, no doubt, and a book that he wrote from the diaries he kept his entire time here. A special interest, I think, are the glassblowing tools he used. Um, as you can see, they have long handles and they're held much like uh, chopsticks would be to eat with. If that's what you grew up with, um, these would be second nature to you. And truthfully, I wish they were second nature to me. I've seen him use them and they would be incredibly handy tools to have and use. This is the final sculpture he was working on. The Conran Maru it was a, a paddle wheel sailing vessel. And you see the unfinished label there. That's because he died while he was in the process of working on it and I was tasked with making the unfinished um, label and attaching it to the skeleton of the ship. It was fairly nerve-wracking I have to say. So ships were his special thing. He also made uh, models of buildings. This is the physics building at Kansas State University. It's about uh, two foot wide and one foot uh, deep. And these are the ships, um, historical ships that he built. I'm sorry you're not here to see these in person. Um, the tags tell you how many hours he spent on each one. These are all borosilicate glass. Um, the Nimitz and the Missouri um, the surrender was signed on the deck of the Missouri, and if you could look up close, you could see the um, representative of the Japanese Emperor, uh, General Douglas MacArthur. So for the Nimitz, the aircraft carrier here in front, Mr. Ono worked on that for 450 hours. It's about uh, four feet long, I would say. This is the administration building at Kansas State University, Anderson Hall. It's the first building on campus. And you'll probably recognize the White House. And of course, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Um, there's a fairly extensive Wikipedia um, entry on Mr. Ono, so if you're interested, um, you can always find out more information about him online. Fine. And I'll get a little more of a close-up here for you uh, for this version of the Klein bottle. The hole in the side is uh, open, which is, um, some people believe, is a more accurate representation of um, something you can't quite imagine. Uh, these are about 8 to 10 inches tall. Um, a math professor asked Mr. Ono to make him one. 
he was trying to figure out how to do it. He had a dream, woke up in the middle of the night, walked to the glass shop at about two or three in the morning, and made the first one. We're leaving the student union. I hope you enjoyed Mr. Ono's work as we look across the student plaza to the north. Those elm trees were planted in 2002. They're lace bark elms, and I remember that, so you can see how much they've grown in 18 years. This is one of the early buildings, too. Seton Hall, for a long time, has been the home of engineering and architecture. We're going to head back the way we started. Our way back to the chemistry building. Um, I'm panning across a relatively new addition to the old Seton Hall, which was engineering. This is an architecture and a landscape architecture addition. And here we're back to the original old limestone again. And in the distance there, uh, you can see the long front of Hale Library. We'll walk by there. There appears to be something coming out of the lawn there. I'm not sure if that's an art installation or very thin metal zombies, but I'm padding along the front of the Hale Library renovation um, that was done in 1996. It was finished up just as I arrived here. Um, a year and a half or two years ago, um, there was a bad fire in the attic of Hale Library, and the um, water damage done, I can't tell you how many <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of gallons of water came into the building to put the fire out. Uh, almost all the books were damaged to some extent, either by smoke or water, and those are finally coming back into the newly in renovated interior after almost two years. This is the main entrance to Hale Library, known as the Sunflower Entrance, and you can see the ubiquitous sidewalk chalk. We're going to continue on our way past the blue construction fence, uh, and head towards the chemistry building. It will be just ahead after we take a left-hand turn. Well, the sun's up a little higher now, and you can see the chemistry building where the glass shop is located on the ground floor. Naturally, you'd recognize it immediately as a chemistry building because of the big stacks on top, which are part of the ventilation system for the hoods and the rest of the building. Well, we're back where we started our tour. Behind me is the old chemistry building, Willard Hall, which I showed you when we started. And I'm panning across to the entrance to the uh, building that chemistry occupies now with the exalted name of Chem Biochem. I'm sure the building could be named after you for, oh, maybe a mere million dollar donation to Kansas State University. Clearly we're in chemistry heading towards the glass shop because we're going downstairs and we can see a periodic table. This will probably appear kind of normal to anybody who works in a chemistry building. That is posters on all the walls of uh, all the research that's going on here. And we're here at the scientific glass blowing shop. Welcome to K-State. Glad you're here.